Okay, Lambert, are you helping me today? Well, that'll sure be fun, won't it? Yeah. What if the kids are here? Oh, wait, I think they're here. Hey, guys. How you doing this morning? <clears throat> so, Lambert and I were just hanging out. Come on over, Lambert. You guys remember Lambert, right? My sweet little lamb. Yeah. You know, I think that Lambert came to be part of our family around about Easter last year, wasn't it? Was that when? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet Lambert. You know, I love lambs because they make me think of Jesus because he's the lamb of God, right? He was the ultimate sacrifice for us. Yeah. Tell them hey. Okay. So Lambert, are you going to hang out for Bible time today? What? Oh, you were just kidding. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to let Lambert go and have a seat so we can get started with our pledges. Oh, what? Oh, well, that would be fantastic. Lambert wants to hold the flags. All right. So everybody stand up nice and tall. Lambert's going to help us out here. You got it, buddy? All right. Here we go. Nice and tall. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job, Lambert. Nice going. All right. And now we have our Christian flag. Now be careful. Don't drop them, okay? All right. Put, yeah, put both hands on them. There we go. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Good job. All right, now Lambert, I don't know how you're going to hold the Bible. You got a plan? Can I help you? Yeah, I'll help you. There we go. Oh, that works. Look at there. All right, here we go. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. Good job. All right, Lambert, get it up on your shoulders. You ready? <laughs> the... <clears throat> Are y'all singing with us? Come on. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E spells Bible. Good job. Good job. You guys are so awesome. All right, Lambert, I'm going to sit you down. Okay, buddy? All right. You hang out over there with Sammy, okay? All right. Hang out right there. Oh, he's so cuddly. Just love him. All right, so it looks like the girls have given us some comments here this morning. Oh, and there's Mima. Good morning, Mima. All right, Juliana and Colleen. Oh, and there's Adrian. Good morning, Juliana and Colleen. I hope you're doing well this morning and keeping Daddy straight this morning. That's a full-time job. All right, so now can we sing... Let's sing Jesus Loves Me. Here we go. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Hey. We have another friend that's out and wants to see you this morning. Hang on. Oh, 
And that was not me turning the camera over. All right, guys, I'm going to have to scoot you over a minute. Hang on. Look who it is. Can you guys see her? <laughs> Say good morning, Lizzie. So I wanted you to see. See how she's shedding her old skin? See that? Can you see right there? Yeah. She's getting rid of that old dry skin. And her new skin is so soft. Wow. Isn't it amazing how God made them? So I have a story to tell you. It's a scary story. Are you ready? Yeah, so I came in the other night and I had noticed that she was, her skin was shedding and she was hanging on her little ladder thing in her, on her coconut that she sleeps in. And I had seen her earlier that day and I thought she was just hanging out. Well, I came back and some of the grass from her coconut was around her neck. Oh, it scared me so bad. And so I was breaking it off and getting it off and she's just fine. She's just fine, but oh, it was so scary to me because I thought, what if I had not noticed it when I came back in? Oh, yes, it scared me. But she's just fine now. Right, Lizzie? Yeah. Tell them hello. All right. Isn't she amazing? So, you know, they have a little baby one just like her at the Pet Sense in Cape Carteret. Sure do wish I could have him, but, you know... These two guys that we have in here now, they eat a whole lot of crickets. And so a third one, well, that would just be more crickets to buy. And, well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if he's still hanging out. He's only about that long. He's really cute. And I wish I could put him with Lizzie, but oh, Lizzie, see, she's had her own space for a long time. I'm kind of afraid they might not get along. And then, well, that would be sad because what if they hurt one another, right? So, yeah. I guess Lizzie can just occupy her big old terrarium by herself, her and her crickets, right? Yeah. All right, you want to tell the boys and girls bye? Because, you know, it's time for her to go to bed, remember, because she's nocturnal. Yeah, so I guess I interrupted her sleepy time. Check out how the skin is peeling off of this eye right here. It almost looks like, let me turn around. It almost looks like her eyeball is covered, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I guess it kind of is because she doesn't have an eyelid. Pretty cool creatures God made for us to enjoy. All with a reason. You know that? Every creature has a purpose. Yeah. And I'm glad that one of your purposes is for me to love you, Lizzie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to put her back and then I'll be right back. Because it's time for her to go to bed. Say good night, Lizzie. Good night or good morning or sleepy time. She's going to sleep. All right. Hop in there, sister. Oh, my short arms. Oh, she doesn't want to go in. She wants to stay for all of chapel, I think. Huh. Gotta go to bed, Lizzie. All right. Let's see. I'm going to try not to shake the camera too bad. Oh, thank you guys for being so flexible. You really are flexible for us to move all around in our mobile classroom. All right, let's see. Did I reset it okay? How's that? Is that good? Uh, okay, I think that's pretty good. All right, so, yay! Glad you got to see Lizzie this morning. Sweet girl. Tony over there, he's still sleeping. Tony's a lazy lizard. Did you know it? He's pretty lazy. Hey, but guess what I started looking for yesterday? Our butterfly larva. Oh, I'm going to be ordering those soon so we can observe them hatching. And then have our butterfly release day again. You know how much I love the butterflies, right? Oh, I cannot wait. So, yeah, so I started working on that order yesterday. And they have ladybugs. And they had praying mantis. It's so difficult for me to decide what to get for our classroom. I just want them all. Don't you guys think that's cool? Yeah, so we'll see. I don't know. I'm working on the order. And we'll see, um, because I have a budget, I have an allowance that I can spend. So we'll see how it comes out. But just know we got some springtime hatching creatures coming. It's going to be so much fun to watch how God 
just created them to transform. You know how the butterflies, they come and they're these little fuzzy worms? They don't look at all like butterflies, do they? And then they get in this crunchy, hard, chrysalis looking thing. And then they start hatching out and moving their wings. And they're these beautiful butterflies. Oh, I love how Jesus transforms us. Wow. Oh, Adrian, did you have a question? Oh, Bailey. Bailey is just fine. Bailey is just fine. She wanted to come into chapel, of course, but you know, she's like a bull in a china shop back here. And so she's out taking a nap, waiting for me to finish so I can feed her some breakfast this morning. And you know what I'm going to have, right, Adrian? That's right. I'm going to have my avocado toast while she's having her morning dog food. That's right. And my coffee, of course. Adrian, it's been so long since you fixed my coffee. I do hope you'll come and visit soon. All right. Now, let's... Very good. All right. Looking at my comments again. Let's go to our days of the week. We have to fix it. We've not been together since Monday. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see here now. We weren't together yesterday, so that was Tuesday. Um, which means today is, what is today? Today is Wednesday, because it's chapel day, right? It's Wednesday. Oh, sweet Bendy, Miss Linda, I just saw your message. Bendy has got to come and visit chapel very soon. All right, so today is Wednesday. There we go, right there. All right, so if today, let's go ahead and put our number up too jumping all around this morning. Can you tell? Oh my goodness, guys. Listen, we only have one day after today left huh, in March. Wow. All right. So if today is Wednesday, we got to go backwards past tense for yesterday. So that means if today is Wednesday, yesterday was Tuesday. That's right. Past tense was. Yesterday was Tuesday. All right. And tomorrow will be. So today is Wednesday. Going forward will be future tense Thursday. That's right. So tomorrow will be Thursday. Good. For my English students out there, that tense, past tense, present tense, future tense, it's important. Listen to that. All right, so today is Wednesday, yesterday was Tuesday, tomorrow is Thursday. Can we sing the Days of the Week song? Oh, let's do it. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, there's even Saturday. Days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. All right, now, did anybody tell me about the weather? Did any of my young meteorologists, yep, look at there, cloudy and cold. Yes, yeah, so we can take down sunny because it is definitely not sunny today. It is a cloudy day. So we got cloudy and cold. Are we still in springtime? Yeah, we're still in spring. So the season is spring. The weather today is cloudy and cold. And today is the 30th of March. Shall we count? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Come on. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Yes, 30. Today is March 30th. That's right. Tomorrow will be the last day of March. And then Friday is April 1st. Now listen, you kids, don't be pulling pranks on your parents because it's April Fool's Day. Mm -mm. You be nice to your mamas and daddies. <laughs> okay, Adrian, you hear me? Hey, and if Emerson's there, tell her that Bailey loved her picture that she gave her yesterday. She loved it. I'm going to put it up on our board here, um, up with your Bailey picture that you drew, Adrian. All right. So, how about... Can we sing J-O-Y? Here we go. J-O-Y, down in my heart. Deep, deep down in my heart. Woo! J-O-Y, down in my heart. Deep, deep down in my heart. Woo! Jesus gave it to me. 
and no one can destroy, destroy, destroy it. Come on, karate kicks. Yeah. J-O-Y, down in my heart. Deep, deep down in my, deep, deep down in my, all the way. Come on. Deep, deep down in my heart. Woo. Good job. Good job. So proud of you. All right. It is time for us to pray. Get your hands up. Here we go. One little, two little, three little fingers. Four little, five little, six little fingers. Seven little, eight little, nine little fingers. Ten little fingers. Fold it in prayer. Everybody bow your head and close your eyes. Oh, dear God, thank you so much for this day, Lord. Even though it is cloudy, Lord, you know that we need some rain to wash away some of this pollen. And so, Lord, we thank you for all of our blessings. And Lord, I pray today that our eyes and hearts will be wide open to see that you bring us so many blessings that we so often overlook. And so, God, may we be thankful for all things that you give us today. Lord, I thank you for this time together. I thank you that the internet provides us a way to be connected, both with my friends that live close by me and my friends that live all around the globe, Lord. Lord, I, um, I thank you for your word. And so, Lord, as we turn to your word today, may we, may we hear what you are trying to share with us today. May we, may we read what your word says and know that it is truth because you are God Almighty. And you are the truth. And so, Lord, I pray that my sweet chapel friends, as well as myself, will be reminded that this world tries to tell us all kinds of crazy things. But, God, you tell us the truth. And so may our eyes and our ears and our hearts be be intentional to focus on you, God. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let's see here. Let me grab our devotional. So this is the I am devotional that we're going through. Mm -hmm. We will um, start our Easter lessons on Friday. And oh, and I was going to bring my, um, the apple, you know, we talked about that on Monday, but I didn't have any apples in the kitchen. I don't know how I did that. I didn't put apples on my grocery order. And apparently my apple three in one book is in my office at the church because I thought it was in my school room. So that'll have to be a lesson for Friday. I'll get some apples. And we'll have our apple book because I want to talk to you about the three in one. Because remember how on Monday we talked about son of God. Jesus is the son of God, even though Jesus has always been part of God, right? He's one of the three persons in God, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Those three make up one true God. And so we talked about like father, like son, and how Jesus, another name for him is the son of God. Well, today... We're going to talk about how Jesus is the great physician. Everybody say physician. Now, I want you to look at this word. Here's another grammar grammar thing. See that P-H? The P-H together says F. F. So he's a physician. The great physician. And the name of this devotion is Up, Down, Up. Hmm. Now, if you want to look in your Bible for this story, it's in Matthew, Mark, and in Luke. Matthew chapter 9, Mark chapter 2, and Luke chapter 5. Our focus verse of today is Luke 5, verses 31 to 32, and it says, It is the sick who need a doctor. I have come to invite sinners <clears throat> to change their hearts and lives. Jesus invites us to change our hearts and lives because of him, and only he can do that for us. So that's why we need to put our trust in him. All right, so have you got your listening ears on? All right, I'm going to put on my... Whoop, my glasses, I got to clean them first because my hair is wet, so it made my glasses all foggy up. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Oh, I didn't tell you to sit down. I hope you've sat down at this point. All right, turn those listening ears on. Here we go. It says, Jesus is back in town. People in Capernaum said to one another, let's go see him. They filled the house where Jesus was staying. People even stood outside the door looking in. Teachers and leaders had come to listen to Jesus, too. Then four friends came to the house carrying a man on a mat. You see, this man was paralyzed, and he couldn't walk. That's what paralyzed mean. He couldn't walk. Jesus can heal you, the four friends told the man. We are taking you to see Jesus. No, not one person could get in the house. The house was so full of people. What would the four friends do now? Here they were. They had this friend on a mat and he couldn't walk. What are they going to do with him? They can't get in the house. The roof, the friend said, 
Let's go up the stairs to the roof. Careful, go slow. We don't want to drop him. When they got to the roof, the four friends laid down the man on his mat. Whew, we did it, they said. And here's a picture. See the man on his mat? <clears throat> Boy, there's people everywhere. How were they going to get him down to Jesus? We'll make a hole in the roof. I don't know how the homeowner felt about that, but the friends said they would make a hole and they started digging. Because see, the roof was made of grass and mud and the friends could see right into the house. So I guess it was easy to patch it since it was grass and mud. They saw Jesus. Oh, the friends kept digging. Soon, the hole in the roof was big enough for the man on the mat to fit through. Down you go, the four friends said, and they let the man down through the hole in the roof on his mat right in front of Jesus. Hello, friend, Jesus said. He could see um, <clears throat> that the man and the four friends had great faith. And do you know what he said to him? Your sins are forgiven. Why did Jesus say that? Wondered the teachers and the leaders that were there listening. No one except God can forgive sins. Well, remember, these people still didn't, you know, some of them were not believing that he was God in the flesh, that he was Jesus, God's son. Jesus knew what they were thinking. It is easier to forgive sins or to heal, he asked them. But so you will know, I have authority to do both. He turned to the man on the mat, and you know what he said to him? Get up, pick up that mat, and you go home. Get up. He's paralyzed. What would happen? You know how people say you can hear a pin drop? That's how it was. It got so quiet. No one said a single word. Then the man on the mat, you know what he did? Well, he stood right up. He got up. He picked up his mat. People near the door squeezed together to clear, clear a path for him because Jesus said, get on up and go home. The happy man walked out the door and headed for home, just as Jesus had told him to do. Wow, people said. Amazing and wonderful. We have never seen anything like this before. Well, because the truth is, is they hadn't seen Jesus before, right? So what does this mean, really? How does this apply to us? Doctors help us get well when we are sick. Do you know your doctor's name? Men and women go to college and to medical school for many, many years before they can be doctors. They also promise to always do what is best for the sick people who come to see them. Physician is another word for doctor. We call Jesus the great physician because he is the very best doctor. He didn't have to go to school to learn how to make people well. He can heal our bodies when they are sick, and he can forgive our sins because he is God. That's right. He can make us well in every way, not just our colds, not just our ailments, but our sins, our hearts that are hardened because of sin. See, he can, he can make all that well. Because he's God. And let me tell you something. Nobody else can do that. Only God can do that. And remember, Jesus is God in the flesh. And so, so only God can do that. Only God can heal the way he does. You see, we can be good friends and we can help our friends out. Kind of like with Lizzie. You know how I helped her out the other night when she was all tied up in that string? Or I, I helped Tony when, when he needs fresh food in his tank. Or, or maybe like when Mima needs to go to the doctor and I go with her to the doctor. See, we can do things like that to help friends, but we can't heal them. Only God's power can heal them. And not just of ailments, not just of the situations that they're in, but of their sin. Only Jesus can do that. And that, my friends, is why Jesus died on the cross, right? So that our sin can be fixed. It can be healed because we can't do that by ourselves. Our hearts, we can't fix the sin in our hearts on our own. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans that we're all born sinners, but that while we were sinners, Christ died for us because see, sin has a price and Jesus paid that price for us on the cross. And so 
when we think about how this man, his friends took him, they helped him, we need to think about what Jesus did for him. And not just that he made him walk again. While that is wonderful and amazing, the most amazing thing is that he showed him who he was and told him that because he believed, then his sin, his sins were forgiven. That's pretty awesome that Jesus can do that for us, don't you think? I mean, especially since nobody else can. Wow. That's pretty wow, isn't it? All right, so hey, here's a picture. Check it out. There's the man with his mat. He said, peace out. I'm out of here, guys. Going to the house, right? And and look, he's walking. He's walking. Yep. Oh, Jesus healed him. And you know, did it say he, he walked on slowly? No, I mean, like, he rolled on, didn't he? Because he was full of joy. Because his heart had been healed, too. Wow. You know, it's so cool when <clears throat> when people first meet Jesus. You know, like maybe you've heard of Jesus, but when you first meet him in your heart, it's so very cool to see how people are just instantly filled with joy. Yeah, pretty sweet how he works. Wow. Did you enjoy that, Lambert? Yeah, me too. How about you, Sammy and Tammy? Pretty awesome story, isn't it? What's that? Oh, Sammy said he helps his friends too. I know, right? Because you have friends that hang all in trees, and I'd imagine sometimes they need help. How about you, Lambert? Do you have to help your friends sometime? Oh, yeah, out in the pasture, yeah. Sometimes sometimes they get lost, don't they? Yeah. Do you help them back to the shepherd? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, thanks for being in chapel time today. That was awesome. Hey, can you, are you going to stay for story time? Good deal. All right. Okay, so are you ready for our story time in C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia? Oh, what is going to happen today? All right, here we go. I'll grab my book. Hey, Mr. Bear. All right. <clears throat> we stopped oh, on chapter three about the dwarf. Oh, so excited. Are you ready? Turn on your listening ears again. Do you need to, let's stand up and stretch. Everybody stand up. Let's stretch for a minute. Stretch to the ceiling. Oh, that feels really good to my shoulders. Stretch. Now stretch to the right. Yep. Now stretch to the left. And back to the right. Oh, yep. And back to the left. I sound like a box of Rice Krispies right now. And down to your toes. Come on. Stretch it out. Here we go. Yep. And back up to the ceiling. And now let's pull this elbow back. Oh, yeah. Woo! That feels good. And now let's pull this elbow back. Yep. Stretch. Oh, good. All right. And now let's twist a little. Hair everywhere. Twist a little. Okay. Cool. All right. Sometimes we just need to kind of stretch and reset, don't we? All right. So you can sit back down now. We're going to have our story time. Here we go. The dwarf. The worst of sleeping out of doors is that you wake up so dreadfully early. Hold on a second. Adrian said something. What did you say, Adrian? After Little House on the Prairie, me and my mom are going to read. <gasps> oh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. You're going to remember some of what we've read already. But listen, I've read the Narnia, the Chronicles of Narnia several times. Never gets old. Always exciting. That's great. All right. So the worst part of sleeping outdoors is that you wake up so dreadfully early. And when you wake, you have to get up because the ground is so hard that you're really uncomfortable. And it makes matters worse if there's nothing but apples for breakfast and you have had nothing but apples for supper and really for lunch the day before. When Lucy had said truly enough that it was a glorious morning, there did not seem to be anything else nice to be said. Edmund said that everyone was what everyone was feeling. We've simply got to get off this island. That's kind of what everybody was thinking, I think. When they had drunk from the well and splashed their faces, they all went down the stream again to the shore and stared at the channel which divided them from the mainland. We'll have to swim, said Edmund. Well, that would be all right for Susan, said Peter, because Susan had won prizes for swimming at school. But I don't know about the rest of us. By the rest of us, he really meant Edmund, who could not yet do two lengths at the school baths, and Lucy, who could hardly swim at all. 
Anyway, said Susan, there may be currents. Father says it's never wise to bathe in a place that you don't know. But Peter, said Lucy, look here. I know I can't swim for nuts at home in England, I mean. But couldn't we all swim long ago? If it was long ago, when we were kings and queens in Narnia, we could ride then, too, and do all sorts of things, don't you think? Ah, oh, but we're sort of grown-ups then, said Peter. We reigned for years and years and learned to do things. Aren't we just back at our proper ages again now? Oh, said Edmund in a voice which made everyone stop talking and listen to him. I've just seen it all, he said. Seen what? asked Peter. Why, the whole thing, said Edmund. You know what we were puzzling about last night, that it was only a year ago since we left Narnia, but everything looks as if no one has lived in Care Paravel for a hundred years now? Well, don't you see? You know that, however long we seem to have lived in Narnia, when we got back through the wardrobe, it seemed to have taken no time at all, remember? Go on, said Susan. I think I'm beginning to understand. And that means, continued Edmund, that once you're out of Narnia, you have no idea how Narnian time is going. Why shouldn't hundreds of years have gone past in Narnia while only one year has passed for us in England? By Jovi, Ed, said Peter, I believe you've got it. In that sense, it really was hundreds of years ago that we lived in Care Parival. And now we're going back to Narnia just as if we were Crusaders or Anglo-Saxons or, an or ancient Britons or someone coming back to modern England. How excited they'll be to see us, began Lucy, but at the same moment, everyone else said, Hush, look, for now something was happening. There was a wooded point on the mainland a little to the right, and they all felt sure that just beyond that point must be the mouth of the river. And now, round that point, there came into sight a boat. When it had cleared the point, it turned and began coming along the channel towards them. There were two people on board, one rowing, the other sitting in the stern and holding a bundle that twitched and moved as if it were alive. Both these people seemed to be soldiers. They had steel caps on their heads and light shirts of chain mail. Their faces were bearded and hard. The children drew back from the beach into the wood and watched without moving a finger. This'll do, said the soldier in the stern when the boat had come about opposite to them. What about tying a stone to his feet? Corporal, said the other, resting on his oars. Garn, growled the other. We don't, we, we don't need that, and we haven't brought one. He'll drown, sure enough, with a stone, as long as we've tied the cords right. With these words, he rose and lifted the bundle. Peter now saw that it really was alive, and was, in fact, a dwarf, bound hand and foot by struggling as hard as he could. Next moment, he heard a twang just beside his ear, and all at once the soldier threw up his arms, dropping the dwarf into the bottom of the boat, and fell over into the water. <laughs> he floundered away to the far bank, and Peter knew that Susan's arrow had struck on his helmet. He turned and saw that she was very pale, but was already fitting a second arrow to the string. But it was never used. As soon as he saw his companion fall, the other soldier with a loud cry, jumped out of the boat on the far side, and he also floundered through the water, which was apparently just in his depth, and disappeared into the woods of the mainland. Quick, before she drifts, shouted Peter. He and Susan, fully dressed as they were, plunged in, and before the water was up to their shoulders, their hands were on the side of the boat. In a few seconds, they had hauled her to the bank and lifted the dwarf out, and Edmund was busily engaged in cutting his bonds with his pocket knife. Peter's sword would have been sharper, but a sword is very inconvenient for this sort of work because you can't hold it just anywhere lower than the hilt. When at last the dwarf, dwarf was free, he sat up, rubbed his arms and legs, and exclaimed, Well, whatever they say, you don't feel like ghost. Like most dwarfs, he was very stocky and deep-chested. He would have been about three feet high if he had been standing up, and an immense Beard and whiskers, of course, red hair, left little on his face to be seen except a beak-like nose and twinkling black eyes. Anyway, he continued, ghost or not, you've saved my life and I'm extremely obliged to you. But why would we be ghosts? asked Lucy. I've been told all my life, said the dwarf, that these woods along the shore were as full of ghosts as they were of trees. That's what the story is, and that's why... 
when they want to get rid of anyone, they usually bring him down here, like they were doing with me, and say they'll leave him to the ghost. But I always wondered if they didn't really drown them or cut their throats. I never quite believed in the ghost. But those two cowards that just got that you've just shot believed all right. They were more frightened of taking me to my death than I was of going. Oh, said Susan, so that's why they both ran away. Um, what's that, said the dwarf? They got away, said Edmund, to the mainland. I wasn't shooting to kill, you know, she said. She would not have liked anyone to think she could miss at such a short range. Hmm, said the dwarf, that's not so good. They may mean trouble later, unless they hold their tongues for their own sake. What were they going to drown you for, asked Peter. Oh, I'm a dangerous criminal, I am, said the dwarf cheerfully. But that's a long story. Meantime, I was wondering if perhaps you were going to ask me to breakfast. You have no idea what an appetite it gives me being executed. There's only apples, said Lucy dolefully. Well, better than nothing, but not so good as fresh fish, said the dwarf. It looks as if I'll have to ask you to breakfast instead. I saw some fish and tackle in that boat, and anyway, we must take her round to the other side of the island. We don't want anyone from the mainland coming down here and seeing her. I ought to have thought of that myself, said Peter. The four children and the dwarf went down to the water's edge, pushed off the boat with some difficulty, and scrambled aboard. The dwarf at once took charge. The oars were, of course, too big for him to use, so Peter rowed and the dwarf steered them north along the channel and presently eastward round the tip of the island. From here, the children could see right up the river and all the bays and headlands of the coast beyond it. They thought they could recognize bits of it, but the woods, which had grown up since their time, made everything look very different. When they had come round into the open sea on the east of the island, the dwarf took to fishing. They had an excellent catch of pavenders, a beautiful rainbow-colored fish, which they all remembered eating in Care Paravel in the old days. When they had caught enough, they ran to the boat up to a little creek and moored her to a tree. The dwarf, who was a most capable person, and indeed, though one meets bad dwarfs, I never heard of a dwarf who was a fool, cut the fish open, cleaned him, and said, Now, what we want next is some firewood. Oh, we've got some at the castle, said Edmund. The dwarf gave a, little, a low whistle. Beards and bedsteads, he said. So there really is a castle after all? It's only a ruin, said Lucy. The dwarf stared round at all four of them with a very curious expression on his face. And who on earth, he began, but then broke off and said, no matter, breakfast first. But one thing before we go on. Can you lay your hand on your hearts and tell me that I'm really alive? Are you sure I wasn't drowned and we're not all ghosts together? When they had all reassured him, the next question was how to carry the fish. They had nothing to string them on and no basket. They had to use Edmund's hat in the end because no one else had a hat. He would have made much more fuss about this if he had not by now been so ravenously hungry. At first, the dwarf did not seem very comfortable in the castle. He kept looking around and sniffing and saying, hmm, looks a bit spooky after all. Smells like ghosts too. But he cheered up when it came to lighting the fire and showing them how to roast the fresh pavenders in the, in the embers. Eating hot fish with no forks and no pocket knife between five people, well, it's a little bit of a messy business. And there were several burnt fingers before the meal was ended. But as it was now nine o'clock and they had been up since five, nobody minded the burns so much as you might have expected. When everyone had finished off with a drink from the well and an apple or so, the dwarf produced a pipe about the size of his own arm, filled it, lit it, blew a great cloud of fragment smoke, and said, Now, you tell us your story first, said Peter, and then we'll tell you ours. Well, said the dwarf, as you've saved my life, it is only fair you should have your own way. But I hardly know where to begin. First of all, I'm a messenger of King Caspian's. Who's he? asked four voices all at once. Caspian the Tenth, King of Narnia, and long may he reign, answered the dwarf. That is to say, he ought to be the King of Narnia, and we hope he will be. At present, he is only king of us old Narnians. What do you
Check one. Okay. Are we back now? It looks like it's back on my end. I don't know how much you missed. Let's see. Okay. So here's the challenge. I'm going to read it one more time since we lost sound. Okay. Huh. Oh, is that better? So we got sound now? Okay, good. Thanks for telling me. Thanks for telling me, guys. All right, so here's your challenge. The Bible tells us of some people who thought they had seen a ghost. One of the ways he reassured them that he was real was by eating fish. Do you know who it was? Your hint is going to be in the book of Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, New Testament, chapter 24, verses 36 to 45. Can you find out who it was that proved he was real by eating fish? Okay. All right. So there's your challenge for today. Now, remember, if you can find the answer and you send it to me in a message, or I would love a video, maybe in Marco Polo, or maybe mom videos you with her phone and sends it to me, then I'll send you a prize, of course, if you find the right answer. All right, guys. Okay, so that concludes our chapel for today. Thanks for being patient while we were fixing our sound issue there. You know, here's what makes me kind of giggle. is Satan always tries to break down what we're doing, doesn't he? Technology is so great when it works because it keeps us connected. But sometimes he'll weasel his way in. But hey, we, we figured it out and we made it better. So thank you for being in chapel today. I will see you guys on Friday. Now, listen, Friday's going to be recorded because it's a Mops Friday, right? So I'll be at Mops with my friends there at church. Um, but I'll get it recorded and posted for you so you can hear the next chapter and, and you'll have your devotion for Friday. Okay, guys? Let me see those kissing hands. Come on. Where are they? Let me see your kissing hands. All right. I love you guys. I will see you on Friday in chapel, if not before. Now go, be united in the passionate pursuit of the next generation. You know, the Bible tells us to go make disciples of all the nations. So find somebody today that you can love on and tell about Jesus. I love you guys. Bye.